friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the gorgeous angel wing begonia. This is a plant that I have honestly struggled a little bit with in my time as a plant parent and I've had several angel wing begonias die on me but I feel like I finally got it figured out and I wanted to share my tips and tricks with all of you today. Before we get into it, I just wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Let's get into it. So when it comes to begonias, there are two main types. There are cane begonias, and then there are rex begonias. I am not talking about rex begonias here. Cane begonias are called cane begonias because they grow more upright on these sort of cane-like structures, whereas rex begonias tend to be a bit more bushy and won't grow as vertically. They'll tend to stay a little bit more horizontal. But then within cane begonias, there's also two main types. There is angel wing begonias, which this one is, and there are dragon wing begonias, which don't have these sort of characteristic spots on them. Their leaves are more a solid, typically dark green color. And those are hybrids, so their care is ever so slightly different than angel wings. I don't believe I've tried to grow a dragon wing begonia. I've basically only tried angel wings because I am quite a fan of these little silvery spots. So that's kind of what I'm drawn to when it comes to begonias. This care is for angel wing begonias only. Dragon wing is probably quite similar, but I don't have experience with them, so I don't feel like I can accurately talk about them as well. So I actually have three types of angel wing begonias at the minute. This one is a begonia white ice and you can see how many white spots it has on its leaves, especially down towards the bottom, because this one is getting quite a lot of light. It, I think it has lots more silver than the parts of the plant that might be getting slightly less. But this one has the very characteristic red backs to its leaves. I do prefer the front personally, but it is a very cool one. And it's got these very pointy sort of wings at the top. I also have this one, which is actually quite new to me. I'm not sure exactly of the ID on it, but it is similar, but you can see it's kind of a more soft version than the white ice. It's more rounded and the spots aren't as intense, but it does have the, the same sort of characteristic growing from one side and out. This one also doesn't have as red of backs. They're ever so slightly red, but not crazy. This one is fairly new to me as well, so I'm hoping that I can get it to grow well in here. And then the last one that I have, which I'm pretty sure is an angel wing because it does ever so slightly have those spots on the leaves. They're more of a pinky tone in this plant and they're a lot harder to see because the plant has hairs as well. But there you go, you can properly see it on these leaves. They're just a lot more muted in spots. This is an Arabia sunset, and you can see how blood red the backs of these leaves are, and they have a very hairy texture on both the front and the back. And I feel like these edges are a lot more serrated than the other angel wings that I have. They're very much kind of like a little saw or some very dull scissors chopped them out. But I'm pretty sure this is an angel wing because of the spots, but if I am wrong, do let me know. The best light for your angel wing begonia is going to be bright indirect light. That's where they're going to thrive the best. They're not huge fans of super bright direct sun. They can't handle it as well as the more waxy varieties of begonia. Their leaves are a bit thinner, so they'll probably burn if they're getting prolonged hot sun exposure. But you also don't wanna be giving them too low of light. If they're not getting enough, they'll grow a bit more leggy, so more internodal space. Their leaves will be a bit paler in color and they could stop flowering. These begonias do flower. I'm personally not looking for flowers out of my begonias. I've not had any of these specific ones flower. I've had ones 
that I've had previously flower, but those have since passed away, unfortunately. I can talk about that a little bit more in the watering section, but I don't really need these ones to flower, so giving it higher light is not a priority for me. This one is currently living in my Millsbow cabinet, and so it does get grow light for most of the day, and I think it has quite liked that. But before it was in the Millsbow cabinet, it was living in my pond box, which sometimes gets grow light, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes I just turn that one off for a while. So it wasn't getting the most light and it was still growing absolutely fine. My Arabia Sunset, on the other hand, is on my shelves in the office. And those ones only get grow light from an hour before sunset until 10 p.m. So it does vary based off of the time of year. Right now in November, it's probably getting five to six hours of grow light a day and it is still growing quite well. I don't think it's going too leggy for me. I'm perfectly happy with how it is. And then my little no ID one, which I should probably just ask the person that gave it to me. This one is living in my newly renovated Acker Bar. So it is underneath the Soltec grow light because it gets pretty much no natural light in that corner. So the Soltec light is on all day. So it's getting plenty there given that is a very new spot. It was like my last video. So I can't say whether or not it's liking it yet, but I think it will. So I'm excited to see how it does. I think watering is where I struggled with begonias in the past. I honestly think I was not giving enough water. They do like to stay fairly consistently moist. Obviously not like overloaded, wet, sitting in a puddle <laughs> moist, but fairly moist most of the time. And when I had begonias in soil previously, I was not really able to give them what they needed in that department, mostly because I'm a chronic underwaterer. So, like I do with my other plants that need a little bit more moisture in their lives, I have put all of mine into semi-hydro, and I have had so much more luck with my begonia since then because they've got a reservoir of water at the bottom and they can constantly get the moisture that they're desiring, which means that I don't need to worry so much about the like consistency at which I am watering them. If you are growing your begonias in soil, that's absolutely okay. I can't speak to it as well, but it is recommended that you do keep the soil consistently moist in summer and ever so lightly moist in autumn and winter. Your plant's probably not gonna be growing as much then anyways, and so they won't need as much then, and they're at higher risk of overwatering because they're not using as much, so definitely slow it down in the autumn and winter and cooler months because you don't want to overwater these ones either. I do have an example of what underwatering looks like on this one. It will come out in the leaves growing brown tips because this one is in the office and I am not as on top of watering in there as I should be. It is a problem that I'm, I'm working on, but I have let this one get slightly too dry a couple of times and this is the result. So if you're starting to notice brown tips, and like crispy tips on the edges of your leaves, that is probably a sign that you are underwatering. They will also wilt a little bit if they are too thirsty, but it, it's kind of hard to tell, especially when you've not got them staked up because they tend to fall over anyways. Angel wing begonias do like it fairly warm. Their ideal is between 18 and 25 degrees Celsius or 65 to 75 Fahrenheit. So their range is a little bit smaller than a lot of other plants you might have in your home. But for the most part, if you're comfortable in your home, they'll be comfortable. You should definitely avoid temperatures below 10 Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit because that is just too cold for them and you could risk giving them cold damage. Also, they're not the biggest fan of cold breezes or drafts. So avoid drafty windows where possible. I personally haven't had any temperature issues as far as I know with these ones, and my flat does get very, very hot in the summertime. You just need to be a little bit more on top of watering when it gets to temperatures above 25 Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit. Just be a bit more on top of it and they should be okay. But ideally you wouldn't be keeping them in those temperatures all year round. 
some people say that angel wing begonias don't need that much humidity but that is not what my experience is i have found that mine grow best in a slightly more humid environment this one when i was propagating it originally or growing it from when it was small was in my pond box and that is pretty much 100 percent humidity it is a sealed box with water in the bottom it's going to be the highest amount of humidity it could possibly get and it was absolutely thriving in that zone and I was a little bit nervous taking that out of really high humidity but I put it into my Mills Bow which again has slightly elevated humidity probably like 60 to 80 or so percent and it has been absolutely fine in there I've not struggled with it at all I think in general I just find that they grow a little bit better in a higher humidity zone my Arabia sunset it's just out in my flat on a shelf but that being said my home is about 60% humidity naturally because I have so many plants and I live in the UK it's quite humid here and moist so I don't really need to worry about the humidity on that one if your humidity is like lower than maybe 40% I would suggest doing something to boost the humidity, whether that be grouping plants together or getting a small humidifier or something like that to give it that little extra boost or just put it in a greenhouse cabinet or a sealed box with water at the bottom. Especially if they're in semi-hydro, that won't be an issue. I wouldn't do that if they were in soil because um, you don't want it to just be sitting in that puddle of water. I personally feed my begonias every single time I water, like I do with all of my plants in my collection. Even throughout the winter, a lot of people suggest that you drop fertilizing down in winter, but because I have created such an artificial environment in my home with heat and humidity and light, I don't really need to worry about my plants going very dormant over the winter. If you do notice that your plant is going a bit more dormant or the growth is slowing in the cooler months, I would suggest toning down the fertilizer, but otherwise it should be fine. I personally use liquid gold leaf like I do with everything. I am an affiliate with them as well, so if you did want to try liquid gold leaf fertilizers um, and Photo Plus and Rhizosphere Plus, all of the great things that they make, you can use my link to get them. Unfortunately, I don't think it comes with a discount code, but it does help me a very little bit. So every little bit counts. Thank you so much if you use my link. Obviously no pressure though. It's just the stuff that I use and I really, really enjoy it. If you want to encourage your begonias to flower as well during blooming time, which I think is around spring i'm not too sure because i don't try and do that with these ones you can use a fertilizer that is high in potassium because apparently that does help with flowering so keep that in mind if you do want yours to flower i don't care so i don't do it like i said earlier i keep all of my angel wing begonias in semi-hydro rather than soil that's what i find easiest for me as an underwaterer i'm not saying that you need to do that but i find it works really really well for them if you did want to grow them in soil something slightly more moisture retaining would be good maybe something with a bit of vermiculite in it they also do like a bit of a heavier soil because they need to hold on to something with their roots they grow quite tall and so if the soil is quite light and airy it can't necessarily provide the support they need to grow this tall vertically you could also stake them up um, i haven't done that with mine though they are growing fairly vertically i feel like this one especially is is pretty okay on the stabilization front but if they do get really really big which there are some varieties that are absolutely huge my neighbor has one and it is massive i'll put in some footage of that but especially when they're getting bigger you probably will want to stake them to keep them upright the roots like to be a little bit more snug and so you don't need to be repotting all that often they're okay being a little bit more root bound i haven't repotted this one since it was probably about this tall and I don't plan on repotting it anytime soon. I think it is perfectly fine how it is. If you are repotting in soil though, make sure you are giving it a pot with drainage holes so the water has somewhere to escape to. Unless you're like perfect at watering, it needs to have those. Propagating 
begonias is so so easy i have one that i am propagating right now this is off of my arabia sunset also ignore the sulfur spots on it i'm treating my whole collection and i did wash off these ones specifically to show you but it is a super easy process especially through stem cuttings so that is what i've done here I basically took some scissors to the stem. You could also use a knife. Try and make sure they are clean because you don't want to be adding any sort of infections between plants or bacteria or anything. And then put it into your medium of choice. This one is currently in sphagnum moss. I think this one rooted in sphagnum moss as well. I'm not exactly sure why I chose sphagnum moss for this one because I was planning on probably putting it back into the mother plant and that's in semi-hydro. They do propagate very well in water as well. And if you are using semi-hydro, that is a slightly easier transition than sphagnum moss. So I really don't know why I did this, but I did and it is growing fine. Also propagation does encourage branching of these ones. So you can see I chopped that top bit off of there. And since then it has grown a branch up this way and a branch that way. I should probably chop this one as well, maybe around there to encourage this one to branch just generally create fuller bushier plants i i would really like that unfortunately angel wing begonias are toxic to humans and animals so i would suggest keeping them out of reach of pets and children i've not had any issues with cleo going through mine mostly because they're in out of reach places so this one's in a cabinet the other one's on a high shelf she can't really have access to them, but they can cause irritation to you or your children or your pets. So avoid consuming if at all possible. So that is it. That is how I take care of my angel wing begonias. I am so, so glad that I have been able to get them to grow in more recent years because they are really, really cool plants. And there are several different varieties. Maybe I will expand into dragon wing begonias coming in the future, and maybe even rex begonias, but those ones scare me. <laughs> so I don't know about that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things or houseplants you would like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to keep growing. Bye.